Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light is getting wrecked. Their shelf space is getting removed from major retailers like Walmart, 7-Eleven, Costco. The boycott has absolutely ruined this brand. It doesn't mean it's not going to be sold anymore. It just means they're going to be taking much, much less cans of Bud Light and promoting them in their stores because they just don't sell like they used to sell. Their sales have been off at least 30% nationally by volume. But now, without even having as much Bud Light on the shelves, without having those massive buy it and we'll give it to you for free kind of discounts, Bud Light is now going to continue to fall and suffer from destroying and rebranding their beer with Dylan Mulvaney. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. I started covering this months ago. This was the first hint that Bud Light was going to permanently be in trouble. Bud Light is ready to buy back unsold cases of expired beer that sat on shelves as consumers revolted over partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. So this was Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch going to their distributors and saying, hey, look, we understand as of April, people stopped buying Bud Light in massive quantities. And these are distributors that normally don't have the beer bought back if it's unsold from the manufacturer. But because of the absolutely ridiculous, inappropriate Dylan Mulvaney promotion and the way the company didn't respond to it and try to make up with customers and apologize, it meant that distributors and the stores that bought the beer from the distributors were going to be absolutely stuck and destroyed financially because of Anheuser-Busch's marketing. They would have been liable probably through a massive lawsuit. There really should be massive lawsuits. I'm not sure why we haven't heard of any yet. Must be that Anheuser-Busch is just writing check after check to pay people off. But this is when it first came to be that Bud Light no longer could be sold on the shelves that they were putting it on, even at massive discounts. So they bought them back. Now, this was from May 21st in the Daily Mail. I started commenting, I'm pretty sure on this video, that you just, this is not a sustainable situation. You can't have beer that doesn't sell on a shelf because the stores need to make money by selling the things that are on their shelf, whatever they're putting on their shelf. And then almost immediately after, Anson Fredericks, former president of distribution for Anheuser-Busch, made it very clear in early June that Bud Light needed to turn things around no matter what. And if they didn't, it would damage the brand severely forever. From a Daily Mail from June 3rd, Bud Light is running out of time and could lose market share forever. Brand will lose retail shelf space to Miller and Coors if they cannot reverse plunging sales, warns ex-Anheuser-Busch executive. And that's Anson Fredericks saying that stores begin resetting their shelf space in September, the month that we're in right now. If Bud Light sales continue to lag, they could lose shelf space, he claimed. In the four weeks through May 20th, Bud Light sales had dropped 24.3% from the year prior, and it's just gotten worse from there. They also had one last chance, July 4th, to create some kind of a promotion to get people interested in Bud Light and buying it again, but they didn't succeed. They weren't able to do that. Now, I did a video speculating about this a little bit a couple of weeks ago, and now it's becoming more mainstream. From ABC News, they actually did journalism on this, and every month or two, they do some good journalism on the Bud Light story. They were the ones covering how Florida had sales dropping 60% on Bud Light and some other Anheuser-Busch products. And ABC News also covered how sales reps were losing as much as $2,000 a month each, being unable to sell their Bud Light products and their Anheuser-Busch products. Here's what they've got. Bud Light set to lose shelf space at major retailers, intensifying boycott woes. A nationwide reset of shelf space could solidify sales declines, analysts said. Well, as far as solidifying sales declines, no, it's going to make them much worse because the people that decided, look, I'm not interested in this new version of Bud Light with Dylan Mulvaney and all this woke stuff. No, thanks. They're not going to buy it no matter how many cans or bottles of Bud Light you put on a shelf. However, the next round of losses is going to be because instead of there being two cases, four cases, 20 cases in a store, it's going to be half of that, sometimes much less than half of that. So that even when someone goes and says, oh, I think I want to buy this product, sometimes it won't be there and it won't get restocked as often. Stores won't keep as much in the back because it's not turning over on a regular basis. They are in severe trouble. Now they're going to lose from their 30% nationally. 
Now they need to take another loss relevant to the lack of shelf space in stores. And I have no idea what they could possibly do to try to get more shelf space back because the stores know what they can and can't sell of the product. It was just proven by the numbers. A boycott against Bud Light has hammered sales for months, dethroning the brand as the nation's most popular beer and demonstrating the longevity of an anti-trans consumer movement that erupted in April. Of course, there's no anti-trans consumer movement. We're just not interested in the new version of the branding the company decided to promote. Even more, a reset of shelf space that takes hold every fall at major retailers could solidify the sales declines and make it much more difficult for Bud Light to return to its performance before the boycott, according to ABC News' interviews with a former Anheuser-Busch executive, a local Bud Light wholesaler, and beer industry analysts. Bud Light is set to lose refrigerator space at a vast network of stores belonging to key beer sellers like Walmart and 7-Eleven, since the retailers typically reapportion shelf space based on recent sales performance, taking away space from struggling brands and giving it to hot selling brands, the industry sources told ABC News. You know, of course, you know, if you own a store and you're paying, especially in a refrigerated space, you're paying in a refrigerated space for utilities, you're going to stock Bud Light or any other brand that you know is not going to sell, pay for that electricity, pay for that product, take away space from other brands that you know people want. Why would you do that? People don't do that. And especially big business, they're very careful to run things by the numbers. Small business is also very sharp as well. They're not going to get stuck investing in space and utilities to promote something that people don't want. Well, during a busy shopping period on a Friday or Saturday night, if you don't have the beer available cold on the shelf, consumers pick up something else. Former Anheuser-Busch InBev executive Anson Fredericks told ABC News, calling shelf space quote, the single largest determinant of sales in a store. There will be a dramatic shift, Fredericks added. Sales of Bud Light have recorded declines for five consecutive months after a product endorsement from trans activist influencer Dylan Mulvaney sparked backlash among many normal people. Here's the claim that they love to make in these articles because they just can't stand that Bud Light blew itself up and generally speaking, LGBT people didn't care one way or the other. The boycott gained momentum, meanwhile, after the initial response from the company was perceived as conciliatory to conservatives by some LGBT activists prompting frustration on the left. You know, I did a video just a couple days ago talking about what bartenders were saying in their own social media group on Reddit called our backslash bartenders. Many bartenders were saying that their sales dropped off. There were three that said that they worked in LGBT bars and they did not see a drop off. So it's quite the opposite from what this article is trying to say. And if you'll notice, they don't cite any sources for this comment. It's just their agenda. It's what they want to promote, that LGBT people have ruined the Bud Light brand. No, they haven't. They have no interest in what's going on for the most part. It's regular everyday people who are not caught up in one agenda or another that just aren't interested in the Dylan Mulvaney branded beer. No surprise here, Anheuser-Busch did not immediately respond to ABC News' request for comment nor did Walmart or 7-Eleven. Over a four-week period ending in early September, sales of Bud Light slid 27% compared to the same period a year prior, according to data from Bump Williams Consulting and Nielsen NIQ reviewed by ABC News. But that is based on revenue, not based on volume. Based on volume, it's 30%. And the reason there's a discrepancy there is because they raise their prices the market accepted the higher prices, just not the beer. Meanwhile, sales of rival brands have surged. During that same four-week period, Coors Light sales climbed 20% compared to over a year ago, while sales of Yingling jumped a staggering 80% the data showed. The disparate performance of Bud Light and its competitors will be reflected in the display changes made by retailers, leaving Bud Light at a disadvantage as it tries to recover lost sales Dave Williams, Vice President of Analytics and Insights at Bump Williams Consulting told ABC News, there's explosive growth on one side and sharp decline on the other, Williams said. This does have that ripple effect where if Bud Light loses space on the shelf, that could make it a longer term endeavor to claw back to where they were if they're ever able to do that in the first place. Typically, about 80% of beer sales take place at retailers or other locations where consumers take the product home. That's called off-premise sales, while 20% of sales occur at bars and restaurants 
where customers drink the product on site, according to a report from Beer Market Analysis. That is called on-premise sales. And the on-premise sales for Bud Light have not been good either. They went from the number one beer nationally to the number four beer nationally. And we've seen in a couple of videos, and I covered it here, where one bar in Buffalo had three taps. They took out the Bud Light tap because they had no room for it because it isn't getting requested anymore. And in my video from the other day, bartenders were also saying they've removed the Bud Light taps and canceled Bud Light at their bar. In recent months, rival executives have trumpeted the potential benefits of shelf space changes at retailers. Constellation Brands CEO Bill Newlands, whose company makes the newly top-selling Modelo brand, told investors on an earnings call in June that a change in retail displays works to our advantage. Quote, some of that is coming because of the growth and velocities that you're seeing on our brands, but also the decrease that you're seeing from some of our competitors. Molson Coors, the maker of Coors Light, held an earnings call last month during which the CEO, Gavin Hattersley, said the company had already heard from nearly 20 top retailers saying that the company's brands would receive additional shelf space as part of the reset from 20 retailers. So it's everywhere, obviously. But we're working hard at making sure that the shelf resets reflect the current reality in the marketplace, which shows that there's a strong momentum behind all of our core brands. The impending loss of shelf space for Bud Light imperils roughly 500 independent wholesalers that sell and deliver the beer. Carlos Laboy, a beverage industry analyst at HBC, told ABC News, noting that many of the distributors have already seen their revenue from Anheuser-Busch beverages this year decline by a third or more. In turn, some wholesalers are cutting back their services and frequency of visits to retailers, Laboy said, further threatening sales performance, quote, expect more wholesaler cutbacks now, he said. There have already been a thousand layoffs we know directly related to Dylan Mulvaney's promotion with Bud Light. 645 people losing their jobs at two glass plants because the glass plants said they had to close down. They saw no hope in Bud Light's business ever returning. And around 350, 360 or so out of Anheuser-Busch, though those are only marketing positions, Anheuser-Busch hasn't even begun to lay off the people who actually make the beer that at least 30% less of America is now buying. A general manager at an Anheuser-Busch distributor in Wisconsin who declined to share their name told ABC News that the shelf resets at retailers could be an issue, but added that they do not expect a drastic change. Well, the boycott has lasted longer than anybody thought the general manager said. Every retailer has their own opinion for what sales warrant on their shelves. Time will tell. To be sure, industry analysts said that Bud Light sales could still recover to the levels at which they stood before the boycott pointing to another shelf reset in the spring that offers Anheuser-Busch an opportunity to win back lost shelf space. Quote, these things are fluid, Gerald Pascarelli said. A beer industry analyst at Webbush told ABC News, it depends on where consumer preference is and what trends are. They will change. Still, the impending reallocation of shelf space carries significant risk for Bud Light in the coming months, the industry analyst said. Quote, you've got to be on the shelf first to be selling, Williams said. One good thing for these 500 independent distributors is they're not all completely dependent on selling Anheuser-Busch products. They do have other products they can focus on. So when Gingling picks up or any of the other brands, they can capitalize on it. But not all of them can. Not all of them have those relationships. And a lot of these distributors, I've covered this in other articles, are cutting back, they're cutting salaries, and they're laying people off because the business is gone and it's not coming back. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Can you help me figure out how if Bud Light is not on as many shelves, and if they have like half of the Bud Light out in the marketplace that they used to have, which is really what this reset is all about, or they have much less frequent visits to stores to try to replenish the beer because they know it's just not selling the way it used to sell and they get rid of their massive discounts and ultimately can't afford to do as much promotion? Do you think there's any chance Bud Light gets back to where it was before Dylan Mulvaney helped them ruin the brand? I don't see how it could be possible. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.